We continue our coverage of Hurricane Irma as it continues making its way across the Caribbean at this point and uh, has its eyes set there across the southeast where all those in the potential path of this storm taking those precautions and those steps before we start seeing those conditions deteriorate as we move into the weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. He's Nick. I'm David and we're still talking about this storm where it's headed, uh, the direction that it's headed. Uh, we've been talking a lot about momentum, a lot of other things as well, but uh, always we're glad to have experts on with us. Melody Lovin, who is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service there in Key West, Florida, a key component and location in the path of this storm. Melody, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Tell us a little bit about what is happening there at the moment and what the current feeling is. Well, currently we are on a tropical rotation, which means uh, most of us are on 12 hour shifts. Some of us, the ones that are on radar are, are on eight hour shifts so we can stay fresh as we see um, some of these rain bands eventually moving through. Um, and we have activated uh, special soundings, which means that we are releasing double the amount of weather balloons. Uh, and this is mainly so we can get a better snapshot for our local models. Melody, we've been talking about that through the week. I know a number of stations, many of them throughout the country have been sending up specials, uh, extra balloons. What have you guys found from that? Can you make any deduction from what you uh, know from your last sounding? Uh, well, basically, these, uh, these extra weather balloons are helping us come to a consensus as far as uh, which way Irma is eventually going to head. The big question is, when is she going to make that turn? And mm -hmm. that's an incredibly <laughs> hard question because it's such a complicated atmosphere right now. Right. Um, so basically, uh, this these extra soundings are helping us pinpoint when and where that is going to occur. So we are seeing the models come to better agreement, although they do shift every now and then. Um, the last few, the last about 12 hours, we have seen a slight shift towards the west. Do you guys have anything that you're favoring there? Can you share that with us? I mean, we've been looking at all of them as well. It seems like tremendous agreement to me specifically because of that turn and they all seem to agree with that turn when it's going to happen. But do you guys have a favorite that you're following or are they just all so close? It doesn't matter which one you pick. Well, it definitely matters because, uh, you know, it's the eye wall is going to contain the uh, absolute most horrendous impacts for whoever uh, receives it. Um, but it's so, so difficult to figure out where that's going to occur. Also, because as the hurricane approaches, we know that it wobbles every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, this could occur with the eye wall replacement cycle. Um, we also know that it is such a uh, strong, large hurricane um, that it we're actually wondering, we're questioning as to whether um, the models mm -hmm. can really appropriately predict when it's going to turn because we're wondering if it's such a big system that maybe it's able to create its own environment mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, and if, if we move ahead in time there, when you've been looking at the potential impacts there across southern Florida, uh, say at your office, if you, you know, say in significant winds there, do you have any alternative plans of who may take over operations should uh, those in the office have to seek shelter? Yes. Um, well, first of all, I do want to touch on our office. It is a $5 million building, and it is uh, built to withstand 150 mile an hour winds on the outside. Uh, we do have an inner shelter that is built to withstand 250 mile an hour winds, but we do have a plan. Um, NWS San Antonio is going to take over for us uh, if Good. we do have to ultimately pass the torch to them if we are severely impacted. Yeah. Good information, Melody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Our prayers and thoughts are with everybody there in South Florida. And uh, thank you so much for that information. It's great information. And she's exactly right uh, when she says, because I've, I've thought this myself, uh, mm -hmm. just, just from the past, Hugo was mentioned earlier, uh, we're still talking about the fact that this thing is so large that again, and so strong, it may be able to create its own environment. It may be able to bust right through what the models think an 80 mile per hour sustained system would end up turning right there. I mean, this is the key plot. This is where things will change dramatically. If it keeps going another 15, 20 miles in this direction before that turn is made, well, all bets are off and we've got a large area then we'd have to consider. Weather Nation, thank you so much for joining us. We